Hi, my name is Denise Jones. It is my privilege today to demonstrate the easy assembly of the Bernina quilt frame, attach the accessories, and load a quilt. We are going to walk you through it step by step today, and when we are finished, everyone will be a fabulous quilter. Before we start building, we need to make sure we have the proper tools. If you dig around your box, you will find three tools included with the quilt frame. A 3mm Allen wrench, a 4mm Allen wrench, and a 13mm, 10mm open end wrench. You use these tools in nearly every step of assembly, so don't lose them. Since we are setting up the 5 quilt frame, it is helpful to have a 16mm closed end wrench and a set of needle nose pliers. These aren't included, but hopefully you'll have these in your toolbox at home. These five tools are all you need to put the quilt frame together. Go ahead and take out your manual. Even though we are going to walk through the entire assembly together, your manual will come in handy. Make sure that you have all eight bags of nuts and bolts that were included with your quilt frame. This is extremely important, so you might want to make a little checklist. Ensure that you have a bag of the following. M8 by 55 mm socket button head cap screw. M6 by 45 mm socket button head cap screw. M6 nylock nut. M6 by 22 mm socket button head cap screw. M6 by 30 mm socket button head cap screw. M5 by 10 mm counter sink screw. M6 by 10 mm socket button head cap screw. And M8 nylock nut. It's time to start putting the quilt frame together. The first step is assembling the quilt frame legs. You will need the M8 by 55 mm bolts, M8 nylock nuts, your leveling feet, and both wrenches. Next, adjust the legs to the height you want by sliding the adjustable leg up and down. Once you find the proper height for your quilt frame, slide one of the M8 by 55 bolts through the casing to the other side and fasten it with one of the M8 nuts. To secure the bolt fully, use your Allen wrench and the open-ended wrench on opposite sides and tighten both the nut and the bolt. Repeat this step for the other three legs, and be sure to check that all the legs are the same height. To finish the legs, you will need to screw the leveling feet into the bottom of each leg. To do this, simply screw your leveling foot into the bottom of each of the four quilt frame legs. These feet should fit snugly, so don't be afraid to give them a good hard turn. Next, we are going to attach the front track support. You will need the front track support, your M6 by 10 mm bolts, and the Allen wrench. It is very important to make sure you are connecting the front track to the front side of the legs. To identify which side of the legs is the front, stand the legs up. You will see that one side has a longer curvature than the other. This is the front side. To identify which side of the track support is the front, simply find the one with two tracks. The back track support only has one track. Once you have figured this out, you can move on to putting the track on the legs. To secure the front track support, you will need to firmly press the track support onto the front leg. Push down firmly on the support until it clicks into place. Once the track is in place, grab two of the M6 by 10 mm bolts and use your Allen wrench to screw them securely into the two openings on the underside of the legs. Again, don't be afraid to be firm when using your Allen wrench. You want this support to be secure. To complete this step, repeat this process for the other set of quilt frame legs. Don't forget about identifying which side is the front. Next, we are going to attach the back track support. This process is almost identical. The only difference is that the back track support has only one track. As with the front track support, you are going to firmly press the track support onto the back leg. Push down firmly on the support until it clicks into place. Once the track is in place, grab two of the M6 by 10 mm bolts and use your Allen wrench to screw them securely into the two openings on the underside of the legs. To complete this step, repeat this process for the other set of quilt frame legs. Once your front and back track supports have been attached to your quilt frame legs, it should look like this. For the next step, we are going to install the tracks on the front and back track supports. All you need are the three 5-foot tracks that came with your quilt frame. To install these tracks, simply slide one piece of track into the back track support and the other two tracks into the front track support. Simple.
Next, we are going to assemble the side leg. For this step, you will need the side legs, two leg braces, two frame ends, the bag of M6 by 10 mm bolts, and the bag of M6 by 45 mm bolts. You will also need your Allen wrench. The first thing you are going to do is grab the leg brace with the Bernina logo on it, as well as the M6 by 10 mm bolts. To install the brace, simply line up the brace with the holes on the side of the quilt frame legs. It is important that the leg brace is facing the correct direction, which is the left end of the quilt frame. Once your leg brace is lined up properly, use the M6 by 10 mm bolts to secure the brace. Repeat this step for the other opening on the left leg brace. You will need your Allen wrench at this point, as the leg brace needs to be secured. Once the left leg brace is halfway attached, go ahead and grab your left frame end. Your left frame end is in the right place if this and this are situated in this position. Next, grab your M6 by 45 mm bolts and slide one of the bolts into one of the two screw holes on the outside of the left frame end. Once you do this, line up the two screw holes on the outside of the left frame end with these two holes on the quilt frame and left leg brace. Slide the screw that has already been inserted into the left frame end through the leg brace and into the quilt frame. Once you get the screw started, use your Allen wrench to tighten down this bolt. Repeat this step for the additional bolt needed on the left frame end. This should be easier as the three openings should already be lined up. Next, take one of the M6 by 10 mm bolts and secure the left frame end to the left side leg brace. To do this, simply match the opening that is on the inside of the left side leg brace with the left frame end. Start the screw using your hand, secure with the Allen wrench. To complete this step, simply repeat this assembly for the right frame end and leg brace. Make sure that your screw in each of the one, two, three, and four screws, and don't forget the screw on the inside. It is important to make sure that your side leg arms match up, so be sure to check this before moving on. Next, we are going to assemble the shelf support system. For this step, you will need the two shelf supports, the bag of M5 by 10 mm screws, and the 3 mm Allen wrench. The first thing you need to do is align your support system properly. The shelf support is properly aligned when the double-sided tape is facing up, and the two holes on the end of the support line up with the holes on the quilt frame legs. Once you click this into place, screw an M5 by 10 mm screw into one of the holes. Start with your hand and finish with the 3 mm Allen wrench to secure. Repeat this step on the other end of your shelf support and again with the additional shelf support. You will be using your M5 by 10 mm screws here, 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 and here to fully secure the shelf support system. Next, we are going to assemble the table support system for your quilt frame. For this step, you will need five table supports, the bag of M5 by 10 mm screws, and your 3 mm Allen wrench. The first thing you need to do is screw in the middle table support. To do this, line up the holes on the table support with those on the front and back of the frame. It is important to note that the table support goes below the frame. Once your holes and table support are lined up, grab your M5 by 10 mm screws and secure both ends of the table support to the frame. It is important to note here that your screw is inserted from above, through the quilt frame first, and then into each end of the table support. As always, you can use your hand to get the screw started, but be sure to fully secure with the 3 mm Allen wrench. To complete this step, simply repeat these instructions for the four remaining table supports. You are finished once your quilt frame looks like this, with table supports here, 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 and here. Don't forget to peel off all the double-sided tape. This includes the tape on the top of the track supports. This is important because for the next step, we will be putting down our table surface and we need the tape to hold it in place. Next, we are going to put the quilt frame table surface down on the frame. To start, you need to identify the textured side. This side faces up once the table is secure. Next, you are going to place the table surface, texture side up, on the quilt frame. Once you put it down, press on each of the sides and corners to be certain it is secure. You can also smooth it down with your hand. Next, we are to put the shelf surface down. To start, you need to remove all the double-sided tape on the shelf unit. This tape is used to hold the shelf surface in place, so make sure that you remove every piece of the tape. 
There are 11 pieces in total. Next, you need to again identify the textured side. As with the quilt frame table surface, this textured side needs to be face up when the shelf surface is secure. Secure the shelf surface by placing it firmly onto the double-sided tape. There should be no overhang and all sides should line up. Press firmly on each corner and side of the shelf surface to ensure that it is completely secured. When you are finished, the shelf surface should look like this. Next, we are going to assemble the rail end units for our quilt frame. For this step, you will need the four rail segments and four ratchet wheel assemblies. It is important to point out that if you are setting up the 10-foot quilt frame, you are going to have two of these poles, which you will connect using this piece. This is what it should look like when you are done. Since we are building the 5 foot frame, the first thing you need to do is remove the ratchet from the end of your pole using a 16 millimeter open ended wrench. Take off the nut using the wrench. Next, tap the screw inside. After your screw shifts inside, tap the ratchet using your wrench until it becomes completely dislodged. Now that you have removed the ratchet from the other rail, you need to connect it to the other end of the rail you're going to be using. Put the ratchet back together with the screw barely sticking out. Then, put the nut on. Slide it into the 5 foot pole that you are using and then tighten the screw. Now that you've got a 5 foot rail with ratchets on both ends, your next step is to connect the rail to the quilt frame. For this step, you will need the rail you just assembled as well as the quilt frame. To start this process, you need to remove the ratchet housing top. Squeeze in the tabs on both sides of the housing section. The top of the section should slide right off as you squeeze, just like this. You will need to do this for both sides, so it is important to remember which housing section goes on which end. Lift the rail and place it down with the ratchet fitting into the ratchet housing section like this. Simply pick up the top of each housing section on each respective end and slide it down into place. You will hear a nice click when the section is back in place. Repeat this process for the additional three rails. When you are done, your quilt frame should look like this, with rails attached here, 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 and here. Next, we will be installing the leaders on the quilt frame. You will need the three leader cloths cut to specific lengths, as well as the three rolls of Velcro included in the leader kit. First, let's place the leaders on their respective rails. The seven will go here, the 17 will go here, and the 23 will go here, on the bottom. Next, cut the Velcro to the appropriate size for each rail. Carefully place the Velcro on the second rail and press down firmly to secure. Repeat these steps for the third and first rails. At this point, you should have Velcro here, here, and here. Next, we will line up the leader cloths with their respective rails. Let's start with the 7 leader cloth. Find the top of the leader cloth with the Velcro strip and carefully line it up with the Velcro strip on the first rail. Press firmly to secure the cloth in a straight line all along the rail. Now use the rail to roll up the entire leader cloth. Repeat this step with the 17 liter cloth on the second rail. And finally, repeat the same process with the 23 liter cloth on the third rail. When you are done, your leader should be in place here, here, and here. Next, we are going to assemble the carriage. To do this, you will need one carriage top plate. M6 nylock nuts, M6 by 30 millimeter screws, M6 by 10 millimeter screws, M6 by 22 millimeter screws, one handle brace, one right handle, one left handle. You will also need the open ended wrench and the Allen wrench. To start, take the right carriage handle and line up the two holes in the handle with the two holes on the carriage top plate. Once you've done this, 
Grab an M6 by 30 mm screw and slide it through the carriage handle into the top plate itself. It should look something like this. Go ahead and do the exact same thing with another M6 by 30 mm screw. Once both screws are all the way through, grab an M6 nut and twist it on with your hand until it is tight. Do this to both screws. To secure, take your Allen wrench and open-ended wrench and tighten both screws like this. To finish up this handle, grab an M6 by 10 mm screw and slide it into the secret carriage top plate hole right here. Once you have done this, grab an M6 nut and fasten the screw just like you did with the previous two. Remember to use your Allen wrench and open-ended wrench to tighten it like this. Repeat this process for the left carriage handle. When you are done, it should look just like this, with screws here, 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 and here. Next, we're going to attach the handle brace. For this step, you need two M6 by 22 mm screws and the handle brace. To start this process, simply take the handle brace and set it on top of your carriage handles like this. Then grab your M6 by 22 mm screws and thread them into the handles like this. Once again, you can use your hands to start the screws, but remember to use your Allen wrench to fully secure them. When you are done, it should look just like this, with screws here and here. The very last thing you need to do is attach the carriage to your quilt frame. Don't forget to put your bottom plate surface in with the texture side up. Make sure you properly align your bottom plate, ensuring that your front wheels will go here, and your back wheels will go here. Go ahead and slide your carriage bottom plate into position. It should roll smoothly like this. Ensure that your carriage handles are facing forward and that the wheels on the top plate, which are here, line up when you slide the piece on like this. As you can see, your top plate should slide smoothly and evenly like this. Once you have completed this step, you are finished with your assembly of the Bernina 5-foot quilt frame. Congratulations! So Denise, I just finished watching your video on how to assemble my Bernina frame and I'm very excited. However, I've never used a frame before so I need a little help with how to put my fabrics on my quilt frame to get started. Okay, Jennifer, what we're going to do is we're going to load the top on this rail. Mm -hmm. We're going to load the back on this rail. Okay. We're going to float the, the batting up through here and attach them all to this rail, the take-up rail. Okay. Okay. Well, I did bring some fabrics with me today. I have to tell you, I was a little bit nervous about starting my first frame project with something that I had pieced. So, I thought we would do a whole cloth quilt and we would use this as our quilt top and this okay. is our quilt backing. So, where does my quilt top go and in which direction is it attached to the leaders? Okay, the top is going to go on this rail here. Okay. When you roll it up, when you attach it, you want to be able to see the top of it as it comes up. Okay? Okay. So, when you attach it, you're going to attach it like this so that when it comes up, okay. it's going to be, you're going to see the top of it. Okay. okay. So, I have the right, right side of my quilt top against the wrong side of the leader cloth. Yes. Correct? Yes, that is okay. correct. You always want to start pinning in the middle and what you're going to do where the hem of the leader is, you're going to put your T-pin through the hem and through your top. You want to pin often but not touching, okay? You don't want to stretch your top as you go. You just want to put the T-pins in and pin her on. And now I can get these T-pins at my local quilt shop, correct? You sure can. And maybe about an inch between the bottom of one pin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why do I need to use T-pins as opposed to just a tra traditional straight pin? They're a heavier weight and they won't bend as easily. Okay. And they're a lot easier to get a hold of when you're working with them. The top of the pin is much larger. And then when you get ready to pull it out, it's going to be easier to pull out too. Well, definitely are easier to see than a straight pin would be. They are, definitely. Now, does it matter whether my quilt top is perfectly centered across the leader cloth? No, only that you center it with your backing. Okay. So if you offset it, you'll want to offset your backing too. So that would be what I use the lines across the leader cloth Absolutely. for to check that I have mm -hmm. the edge here and the edge here aligned. Correct. Okay. okay. We want to lay this down and smooth it out some. Okay. And then we're going to begin to roll. 
Now we're gonna roll and we're gonna make it as smooth as we can so that we get it nice and even, okay? Now as I roll, I'm rolling away from myself? Yes, it would be clockwise. Okay. Now what happens when we come here to the ridge? You're gonna smooth it down. And I smooth it towards myself? Yes. And you have to kind of pet it and keep it rolling smooth and keep it rolling straight so your edges are even. Now, if this were actually a piece top, I would just watch those seam lines and make sure yes. those seam lines were staying. And nice you'll have and to straight. remember when you have seam lines, it's going to be thicker. Okay. You know, when your seams on top of each other, and just it's continue to roll it and pat it and make it nice and straight. Okay. And I would smooth all of my seams in the same direction. Yes, whichever direction you had them pressed in. Well, that wasn't too bad. No, that wasn't bad at all, was it? So now we're ready for the backing? Yes, we are. Okay. What we're going to do is spread the backing out over the frame so we make sure we get our backing turned the right way. We know that the backing is going to be face down. So if you put it with its wrong side up, okay. and once again, you're going to grab the leader cloth and pin it to the back side of the leader cloth, going through the hem once again. Okay, so again, it's the right side of the fabric to the wrong side of the leader cloth, just yes. like we did at the top. Just like we did a while ago. Now, we weren't paying a lot of attention, or I wasn't paying a lot of attention when we started putting our top on, so we're not exactly centered. So it looks like we're about in the same place on the top, but do you have any tips for making sure that we're aligned perfectly on the top and on the bottom? You always want to make sure you mark the center of the quilt top and the mm -hmm. quilt backing okay. so that you can put it in the center of your leader where you want it. And it's always a good idea to have your backing a couple of inches wider on each side and a couple of inches longer on each end than your top is. That way if we are off just a little bit, we're still safe. We're still safe. That's absolutely correct. You just want to make sure that you pin inside the hem of your leader. That will help your leaders last longer. And it's got a nice dotted line on it, so you can pin nice and straight. Now, if I had a pieced backing, then again, I would want to be careful like we were on the top of our quilt in keeping those seam lines relatively straight as we roll, yes. correct? Yes, yes. Now this is great, Denise, to put this on here while you're standing here next to me, but I think for my frame at home, I'm going to mark my leader cloths with backing and quilt tops so that I don't forget. Oh, I think that's a very good idea. And I think I may even mark the inside of the leader cloth with Into right side, side of fabric. Absolutely. <laughs> that would help out a lot. We've got the whole back pinned on the end, mm -hmm. so now we're going to take the back and drop it down just so we can roll it on the roller nice and smooth, okay? Okay, so we're just letting it hang straight down straight and we've down. got the pins and coming down And you can see we're again. pretty even, pretty even with our top. Oh, that was good. That was good. 